Hello, and welcome back to Malachi's Journey to Financial Freedom. This episode, we're going to be talking about liquidity pools on decentralized exchanges, and specifically how to mine them or use the incentives. A couple of terms that I may need to explain. A decentralized exchange or a Web3 exchange is one in which you can connect your wallet. In this case, we'll be using a MetaMask wallet to the exchange and swapping for tokens from one token to another. The liquidity pool is what allows us to swap tokens. People like you and me take tokens and place them in the liquidity pool, and the price is derived by the supply and demand of the tokens that are being swapped within the liquidity pool. Each pool charges a fee to the user to swap the tokens, which is then distributed to those that are providing liquidity. When we talk about mining liquidity pools, we're talking about staking the tokens that show our ownership of the liquidity pool within the decentralized exchange to earn another token or an incentive token. So I hope I break down all of the parts there for you, but let's jump right into it and I'll show you how this works. It's a little bit different than the Forex and other things I've done. But one of the things I do is I do like to look for sources of passive income. This has been something I've done in the past during the last crypto craze or rush. And then as it pulled back, a lot of the pools stopped their incentives or the incentives just weren't there. And I moved to other things. With this new rush and focus on crypto coming, I think this is going to be a definitely a way to create another source of passive income but it is something that people have to understand. There's a lot of terminology that's passed around, level layer one chains, layer two chains, decentralized finance, DEX exchanges, and things like impermanent loss that people just don't understand. And they got to, I mean, they don't, they don't get it. So they, it's hard for them to wrap their head around it. And it feels like it's too hard to do. I have been running a stake on a liquidity pool for a week that's incentivized. So I'm going to show how to take those rewards. I'm also going to show how to put the money in. And it is kind of a convoluted process when you're moving to another chain. Specifically, I'm going to talk about base chain, which is Coinbase's chain. It does not have its own token specifically. It uses Ethereum for the gas fees. Gas fees for these contract interactions should be anywhere from five to 25 cents. Although I have seen them as high as $6. I will show my, I will say, talk about my opinions and what I do, but I'm not a financial advisor. So keep in mind, you got to figure out what's good for you, what's best for you and what, how much risk you want to take. So first off, let's jump into MetaMask or the decentralized wallet. I like MetaMask. I'm comfortable using MetaMask. It's not the only wallet out there, but it is the one that I'm going to use to show you how to do this. So first off, we need to install the MetaMask wallet. I am going to be doing this from a browser, from the Chrome browser. Yes, you can get MetaMask on your Apple phone or your Android phone, or you can get it on other browsers, the Brave browser or whatever. I'm going to specifically be doing this using Chrome and using MetaMask. So you may need to look for other wallets, but this is the one. So we're going to first install the extension for MetaMask. And it's done, it was that easy. Create a new wallet. And I'm not gonna, from this point on, I'm not gonna show you everything I'm doing, but basically you're gonna type in your password and you can confirm it. Now you do have to say, I understand that MetaMask cannot recover the password and we're gonna create a new wallet. Okay, so right now you should go and secure your wallet, which is recommended by copying down the recovery phrase. Uh, we're not going to do that. I understand the risks. Wallet's creation is successful. Now, what I am going to do from here is I'm actually going to add an account 
and I'm going to import an account with the private keys. So if this has worked properly, I have imported the new account. What you're going to notice is we're on the Ethereum mainnet and we have nothing in here. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add the base chain net or we're basically adding different chains to MetaMask. And what you'll see is it comes with that added. You can add a network. So here's everything out there that you can add that's built in. If there's one that's not built in, you will have to look at that network. And So if you want to add a network manually, when you find that network, now make sure that you're adding a network that you know and trust, because if you add a malicious one, it could theoretically hack your wallet and steal your money because you are interacting with the network. But the name, the RPC URL, which is their web address, the chain ID will be a number, their base currency symbol, what they work with, and then if they have a block explorer there. We're not going to do that. We are going to go ahead and just add base chain. And it all has that all built in for us. Base mainnet, mainnetbase.org is the URL, the chain ID, and it gives everything there. So we approve that and we switch to base chain. So, what okay, I did go through this entire video. And when I was editing it, I noticed that the approval screens for MetaMask were not showing when I was doing them through the video. So I'm not gonna go back and record the whole video, but I am going to just show you what it looks like. And so you'll know when you see me interacting with the contracts and then saying, I approve it, and you see me click something that's not there, this is what it actually looks like. So when you do something with on a Web3 with MetaMask, it's going to pop up with this screen over here and I'll zoom in. And basically that's your interaction with the contract. So this is like, I'm claiming 0.3 arrow, which is 59 cents. That's what I've earned in the last hour or two. And then I am going to confirm it. And then that's the contract interaction and it goes away. So I apologize for that not being in the videos, but that's what it is. Instead of going back and reviewing all of the videos, I'm just going to go ahead and show that part so you know that's what it looks like when it's going on. So what we've just done is we've added a layer two chain into our MetaMask wallet. Now, the first thing that we would have to do is we have to get Ethereum into this wallet. So we would add the base chain bridge So basically what we would start with is we would start with the base bridge. And what we would be is we would be on our Ethereum mainnet and we would have Ethereum in this wallet. I'm going to show you the steps of this, but I'm not actually going to go through with it because I already have Ethereum on the chain. So we connect our wallet. We're going to connect a MetaMask wallet. It's going to ask you which account. You can add both if you want or just the one you're using. You click next and you connect it. You accept their terms and now we're in the bridge. And what this is gonna do is if you had Ethereum in your MetaMask wallet here and you wanted to bridge it to base, you can do that. So basically that's, that's how this works. And these are the coins that looks like you could bridge. ETH, USDC, CB ETH, I guess that's Coinbase ETH, don't know. DAI, uh, which is also another stable coin, comp, balancer tokens, RPL and RETH. I don't know those tokens off the top of my head. In this case, I'm mainly going to be talking about ETH and USDC is what I would be moving back and forth. I don't know what the gas fees would be to do this. The part of the region to get away from the Ethereum chain is to get away from the gas fees that are associated with it. So basically you're gonna send from the Ethereum chain to the base chain. It's all gonna be in the same wallet. And it says right there, receive ETH on base chain. Transfer times a few minutes. This says the network fees are 48, pretty minimal there. I don't know if that means if we add 
amount total to it, what the fees would truly end up being or not. I don't have any ETH in there, but that's how you would do it. And you would deposit ETH and you follow the contract. It'll walk you through it as you go. Now that we have our money on base chain in the form of Ethereum. So I'm actually going to turn on, I take it, I'm going to turn on auto detect. And it's going to auto detect my USDC that's already in there. Otherwise, if you want to import, you would have to find the contract address, which I could do. Uh, that's a whole different video on using contracts and stuff. But I'm going to talk about two different decentralized exchanges that are have access through Basechain. First one is Aerodrome Finance, Aerodrome.finance. And what you have to do is you will have to connect your wallet to these decentralized exchanges. So we're on the same chain. We hit connect. We're going to connect with a browser wallet. It's going to once again pop up. It's going to ask us to authorize this and connect. So we are connecting. It's going to show my wallet address and that we're connected. It does require us to sign in. We are trusting this one. That's why we're accessing it with our wallet. If you do not trust a website, do not use your wallet and connect it. I do trust this one, so that's why I'm doing it. So first off, we are going to have to figure out what tokens we want to provide liquidity for. So right here's liquidity. And actually, let's see. It's going to load up. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the incentives. The reason I'm looking at this one is only because I've been using it. And it does have some pretty decent incentives right now, but they do change. Last week, this paid 60% APR. This week, it's 74. It may change again. What makes that change is the values of the tokens and the incentives that are being used to do it. In general, I prefer to use the liquidity of pairs that I want to own. So WETH, which is wrapped ETH, and USDC. All that takes is ETH. It's wrapping it into an ERC-20 token to be used in the contract. So... And we can look. Arrow, obviously this is Aerodrome. Arrow's their inherent token. And it's what they pay out for their incentives. There's two ways that you can make money through liquidity pools. Profit, as opposed to just the changing of value of the tokens themselves. And that is the fees. So if we look here, this is the WETH USDC liquidity pool. And the fees it's earned, it doesn't tell us the time frame. Usually this is going to be 24 hours or seven days. This may be 24 hours, but it's earned $105,000 in fees, which is then distributed to all of the members in the pool. However, Aerodrome Finance incentivizes that pool. And what that means is they're going to incentivize it by giving you arrow for staking in this pool. Okay, let's assume that you have just landed on this page. You've deposited some amount of Ethereum through the bridge into your wallet. And now we're gonna look at how we want to deposit into a liquidity pool. We're gonna go step by step. So the first thing we have to do is pick a liquidity pool. Now remember, these numbers can change. And don't be fooled by the high numbers. If you pick a token that becomes worthless, you will lose all of your money. In general, if you're just starting out and you're happy with 74% a year, I would jump into something like this. With USDC. If you want to go a little bit more risky, something like this USDC arrow, or because I already have the w base Doge, I look at this 602% and I say, okay, I can play that gamble if I so desire. And I'm I'm trading it with WETH. You can trade it with Arrow. You can obviously look at all of these different tokens and liquidity pools. So the first thing that you need is you need to have 
both tokens that you're going to to be using. So if you would deposit it in ETH, you're going to want to swap ETH for the token. So in this case, W base Doge. I already have it. But what I would do is I would swap a small amount of the ETH or whatever, however much I want to put in there. So say you want to put $300 in the pool, you need $150 worth of W base Doge and 150 of WETH, right? So we're going to wrap the WETH. I'll show you how to do that. But say we want to use half of this. I would put zero. Actually, let's just do it this way first. I'm just going to trade this back. And what we're going to do is we'll end up putting 36 million W base Doge back into this. So I'm going to show you. So if you're anytime you're making a trade, you're going to trade this, you have to allow the, the token to be traded, right? So you have to approve the contract to trade it. And then once you're approved it, we're going to swap it for ETH. All right, should be done. We swapped the W base Doge for ETH. We now have $334 of ETH. We actually have $140 of wrapped ETH that we're going to use. So we're going to put that back into this pool and we're going to want that much of the W base Doge to do it with. So I'm not going to wrap it. If you, if you did, you can go ETH to WETH. And you can just wrap it um, into the WETH because the WETH is what's going to be into the pool. We already have that, so I'm not going to run through that again. But I am going to buy that much W base Doge for ETH. So we're going to buy 0 0.04123 ETH. We're going to spend that on W base Doge. So I've already approve the ETH usage and we're going to just run the swap. So estimated fee on the swap is 19. And then what I will be receiving, it tells me right there, or what I'll be spending is 140. And you can see it right there as the market moves slightly, it does change. So we're going to hit confirm. And right down here, it tells us what how they're running this. They're running it from WETH to Arrow on a stable pool, and they're running from Arrow to the W base Doge on the volatile pool. And theoretically, if their contracts are working right on liquidity, that is the cheapest way for us to do the swap. Swap says it's confirmed. Let's go back and check. And yes, we have our W base Doge here. All right. So step number two, you have to deposit your tokens into the liquidity pool. So we have to find the liquidity pool that we want to deposit in. Obviously we already have the tokens ready. So we're going to use, we're going to find the W base Doge WETH pool, which is what we're going to do. Okay, so here's our W base Doge WETH liquidity pool. This is the volatile pool, charges a 2% trading fee. You can, if you choose, pick one of the others. They're, they may be listed, they may not. And we're going to use all of our available W base Doge, and hopefully we have enough WETH to cover it. Let's see. No, nope, we don't. We're actually, we're going to actually use our available WETH. Let's do it this way. So we have to go through and we have to allow the contract to interact with both of our tokens. And yes, it does cost us two cents to approve that. Everything's billed.
All right, so now we click deposit and we're putting this into the liquidity pool. Okay, we have now deposited both WETH and W Base Doge into the liquidity pool. So we will earn our cut of the 2% fee. But if we want to earn the incentives, we now need to stake those liquidity pool tokens onto the network, which is through Aerodrome Finance. So they make it really easy. You don't have to go to their page. It gives you right there, stake your deposit. So we're going to stake our deposit. And what it does is it gives you that token. We're going to stake 100% of it. We're going to authorize that. We're going to approve it. So when we can come back to the transactions activity on our MetaMask wallet, and we can see that we added the liquidity, we approved the usage of the spending cap, and then we deposited it. Basically, we stats our staking. So we can go to the dashboard next, and it actually shows us what we're deposited and staked in the liquidity. So the V is the volatile pool. I, I'm guessing AMM is kind of like the automated market maker system, which is what liquidity pools are. And then it comes back to the tokens we have. So we have $140 of the W base Doge and we have 140 of WETH staked. And if we come down here, this shows our rewards We're right at 600% annually. And in the last few minutes we have earned 0.46 cents. And if we wanna claim it, we can claim it here. I come through, this isn't 100% passive. I do come through and collect this every week. If I was running something on a more stable pool, like on the ETH chain with Uniswap, which we haven't looked at, the contract fees are a lot higher because you're running it on the ETH chain. But those, I might only come back and collect those fees every three to four months because of the cost of the contracts. Because they're so cheap on this, really six to 10 cents, you could collect it every day if you're making a few dollars. Keep in mind that as you're doing something like this, if the arrow token in and of itself crashes in value, you lose your value. If you're doing an unknown token like we are here with W Base Doge, then really you could lose that in value as well. So, with, and the reality is, I'm probably going to stick more money into this pool here because it is incentivized and I'm quite happy with earning Ethereum and US dollar coin and making 74% incentives on top of that. So either way, I consider a pool like this a win-win. So in this case, if you have money staked, you go to the dashboard and this shows you how much I've had staked. I have been staking this for about two and a half weeks, I believe. And I have not collected this for, I think a week was last time I collected, it was last Sunday. I intentionally waited it out to see what would happen. But when I initially staked this two and a half weeks ago, it was $150 of WETH and W base Doge. At this time, and this is your impermanent loss, my my wrapped ETH or my WETH is worth $140 and my W base Doge, don't confuse it with Dogecoin because it's not worth the same, is $140 also for 36 million tokens. What that means is, with the impermanent loss, I have lost $20 in value of my staked tokens. If this W base Doge continues to go down in value and people sell it and get rid of it, I could theoretically lose the majority of this money here. So that is one of the inherent risks, which is why in general, I tend to stick with pairs where I want to own both tokens long-term. However, these pools also have better emissions. They have better incentives. So right down here, we'll look at our liquidity re rewards. And currently it's 604% annually, which in the last week it's changed. And so because the emissions are done in arrow, as the price of arrow goes up and down, this APR will go up and down. 
also as the value or as the incentives change, and I'll show you later how they incentivize it, then this will change also. So it's kind of twofold. It's how they incentivize it as well as the value of arrow. When I was doing this before on pancake swap, at one point, the cake token was worth 25 or more dollars. I'd have to go back and look exact, but it was well over $20 upwards towards 30. Currently, I think it's worth about four or $5. So the question then becomes, how does arrow or cake, how do they keep it worth its value? And so what they do is they give you ways to stake that token as well, which locks it up, but it also means they're emitting more tokens down the road. So they're, they're going to deflate their value. It's going to inflate the number of arrow tokens out there, which is going to bring the value down. So after one week, 22.47 arrow, I'm now at $40.70. So if I cashed everything in right now, let's just do the math here again. $40.70 divided by the initial $300 I put in is 13.56% in one week, which seems really good. If we were to run that for 52 weeks, it'd be right around 700%. However, if we take into account the impermanent loss, and I were to cash this all out, which I am going to do today because I'm trying to show you how to do it, I really only made $20 because I have to take $20 and say that I lost that in the value of WETH and the value of the W-based Doge. Now, I did make money the week and a half before. Really, that's a kind of a wash on the lost value. It's gone as high as $160 on each, so $320, and down as low as... I think it was 130 earlier this week on each. So that would have been 260. And right now it's worth 280. So I am going to claim, I'm going to claim this. I see it just changed a little bit, but I changed now we're at 466 because the price of arrow just moved. So I'm going to claim this. We go back to our MetaMask and see now it's giving us a warning. Network is busy. Gas prices are high. Estimates are less accurate. I'm okay with the seven cents. I might not be okay if it was $7. Hit confirm. And there we go. It's done to import. I'd refresh the list. We're going to import the arrow token so we can see it. And we picked up $40.66 an arrow token. Now, I'm actually going to unstake this as well so that I can show you the staking process next. But I'm going to unstake this as if it were the end and I was done with this. So I would click unstake. I confirm that I'm unstaking. You could unstake some of it or all of it. I'm confirming that I'm unstaking all of it. Once again, it comes back to a contract interaction, which I confirm on MetaMask. So now I've unstaked it, but the money's still in the liquidity pool. It's not, it's just not staked. So now I have to withdraw my tokens from the liquidity pool. So first one, I have to authorize the contract interaction with the tokens. And then I have to withdraw it. And this one's 13 cents. I'm good with the 13 cents. I've, had, I've seen this where it's been as much as $6 on this chain and I would wait to do it. So I approve it all and then I would hit the withdrawal. Withdrawal is confirmed. So I did run into an issue. I got my stake rejected. It did work initially with the W base Doge, but then I also added a USDC arrow and a WETH USDC pool and staked them. And what we'll see here is that on this USDC arrow, I actually did earn some trading fees. And now I'm earning emissions because I didn't have it fully staked. As well as you can see, I've earned some trading fees on the WETH USDC. And so when I came back in, this is what it looked like for both. It said withdraw or stake. 
even though it said the stake had gone through and I should see it staked over here. So I went ahead and hit the stake. So I did have to hit the allow the stake on the liquidity pool and, and authorize the tokens again and approve it. And hopefully it says waiting for pending actions, it will go through this time. Stake, we've allowed it. I may just be going too fast for the contracts. to update, there we go. And that one went through. So I did have to do it a couple times to get it moved over to this staked. And so that's what we wanted to show here is that it's all staked and then it will start showing up in the emissions versus in this trading fees column. Uh, these aren't really worth claiming. Uh, they're less than a penny. So it cost me more in gas fees to claim them. I will just let that sit there until I unstake and when I do unstake them, it will automatically claim those for me. But so I do have into the W base Doge ETH or WETH pool. And then I'm also into what you can see is dropped again as values change. I did put more into the WETH USDC pool. I actually put the remaining of what I had in there. And then I put some into the USDC arrow pool. So once a week, I can come through and claim this and hopefully I'll make 40 or $50 a week from it. Okay, I think I covered all the steps. I know it's pretty convoluted, especially when you're working on a layer two chain or a side chain, but I think I covered all the steps of how to put money into a liquidity pool. I did not go over the pancake swap like I thought I was going to. It does have some version three contracts, which allow you to pick price ranges. However, um, I felt like this video was getting too long. So maybe I'll do that on another video. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to reach out to me in the Telegram group. Please don't send me direct messages because I get too many of them and they get lost. Or you can always drop a comment under this video to ask me questions. I do go through every couple of days and try and respond to all of those. So if I get to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, I can show exactly how YouTube pays the content providers, which is part of the series that I want to do on passive and semi-passive income. So thank you very much and have a nice day.